How would you draw a lion if you'd never seen one in your life? What did people do to get up in the morning before they had alarms to wake them up? And what if we used cats to stay forever young? These are just some of the questions my brain ponders while wide awake in bed at 2 a.m. while my body just wants to go to sleep. And I'm gonna attempt to answer them for you today, but first, why do we tend to overthink the most when we can't sleep? It has to be one of the most annoying experiences we go through on a somewhat regular basis. Desperately wanting to go to sleep but being unable to turn off your brain. Well, it first has to do with reduced external stimulation. When you're out and about during the day, you're generally engaged in various activities. But when you're lying in bed with the lights turned off and minimal external stimuli, the brain begins to draw upon past experiences, memories, and seemingly unrelated thoughts. This is when the brain default mode network, or DMN, becomes active. This web of interconnected brain regions plays a crucial role in various cognitive processes, including self-reflection, introspection, daydreaming, and mind-wandering. To make matters worse, studies show that millennials and Gen Z experience increased levels of stress and anxiety compared to previous generations, which further exacerbates our descent into nocturnal madness. Thankfully, there is one thing you can do to lower your stress levels, especially when browsing the internet, and that is by using NordVPN to protect your online identity. If you're not using a VPN by this point, you either enjoy living on the edge, or you're completely unaware of the threats that you're faced with at every corner of the internet. Scammers have gotten really good at stealing your data, and in extreme cases even drain money from your bank account. So one of NordVPN's really useful features is called Threat Protection, which quickly identifies a phishing attempt before you get to access the fake link. Are you perhaps traveling abroad and are unable to access your Netflix account because you're in a different country? NordVPN can basically teleport you back to your home address so you can be in two places at once, Netflix and chillin' without any additional headaches. And those are just a few of the use cases available to you. What I love about them, apart from being the actual fastest VPN on the planet, is the fact that they don't store any of your data, unlike some other VPN apps out there. They're also running a special discount at the moment, so if you sign up by going to nordvpn.com slash Andre, that's A-N-D-R-E-I, and go for the two-year plan, you get four extra months for free. If you want to test it out, it's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't love it by the end, you get a full refund with no questions asked. Just make sure to use my custom link, otherwise they're not going to know that you came from this channel and you won't get to benefit from the special discount. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring us. Now, remember how we were talking about the brain default mode network earlier? What it also does is it helps you navigate social interactions and understand the thoughts and emotions of others. That's why a lot of the times insomnia is accompanied by painfully awkward memories from years ago when the waiter said, enjoy your meal, and you went, thanks, you too. Other times, there's random questions that have no relevance to your life, but that you just have to know the answer to. Like, I wonder how old a cat can get? Well, the average lifespan of domestic cats typically ranges between 12 to 20 years. But apparently, the record for the oldest cat that's ever been documented was earned by Jake Perry in 1998, when one of his cats, named Grandpa Rex Allen, passed away at 34 years and 59 days old. Well, guess what? Old Jake Perry had another cat that then went on to break that record, named Cream Puff, who lived lived to be 38 years and 3 days old. Born in 1967, Cream Puff lived all the way up to 2005, being able to witness the moon landing in real time, as well as to catch the launch of YouTube. I have no idea what this guy is feeding his cats, but I wouldn't be surprised to find out if he's taking some of that catnip himself, cause he's looking sharp AF. But while Jake Perry had his own secret sauce to keep his old ass cats breaking records, someone else has been stirring up controversy in recent years, fighting off the unforgiving effects of old age. 45-year-old Brian Johnson spends $2 million a year and has 30 doctors on call who periodically replace his blood with that of younger people, including his 17-year-old son. That's right, his own son is offering his blood to keep his father young, which has to either be the biggest act of love and gratitude towards a parent or the most bizarre arrangement ever thought of. Johnson believes that the rejuvenating properties in youthful blood can reverse his aging process, while biochemist Charles Brenner says, and I quote, to me, it's gross, evidence-free, and relatively dangerous. Someone on Twitter also roasted Johnson by saying, all of that just to look like Squidward. <laughs> it does make you wonder though, would you use your kid's blood to stay forever young? Because this guy has apparently discovered the fountain of youth, or so he seems to believe. Although humans have always had a fascination with fighting off time, some cultures have resorted to simply keeping their bodies and that of their loved ones preserved over thousands of years. We know, for example, the ancient Egyptians had elaborate burial practices for their elites, pharaohs, and high-ranking 
individuals. But speaking of cats, did you know that there was such a thing as cat mummies? Mummification was done with the goal of preserving the deceased's body so that the soul could return to it and continue its journey in the afterlife. But although it was a complex and expensive process, archaeologists have often found mummified cats, revealing the significance of these furry companions in their culture. The Egyptian goddess Bastet, often depicted with the head of a lioness or a domestic cat, was the goddess of home, fertility and protection, and cats were considered sacred animals associated with her. So it makes sense why they would devote so much time and attention to their beloved companions. Now if we move further, much closer to our present time, we find another intriguing case involving the preservation of a feline character, but this time for a completely different reason. How would you recreate a lion if you've never seen one in your entire life? This was the unique predicament that King Frederick I of Sweden found himself in in the year 1731. You see, back then it was a common practice for rulers of different countries to exchange exotic animals as a gesture of friendship. So in 1731, the Bay of Algiers gifted King Frederick a live lion, possibly the first lion to ever arrive in Scandinavia. Regrettably, the majestic animal passed away shortly thereafter, and Frederick, wanting to preserve the impressive gift, gave it to a taxidermist, a craftsman who reconstructs deceased animals and maintains their form as if they were just standing still. Mind you, modern taxidermy was merely in its infant stages at that point. It wasn't quite an established profession just yet. And to make matters even more complicated, the man had never even seen a lion in his entire life. And so the outcome, as you can see, was uh, not entirely accurate. But I mean, what even is a lion, anyway? Fast forward a few centuries, and taxidermy has undergone significant advancements in techniques and materials, making it an essential aspect of scientific research, education, and artistic expression. Nowadays, it is a well-respected craft that's being used in history museums or private collections worth a lot of money. However, one of the most peculiar and unique examples of advanced taxidermy is the preservation of Lenin's body. After his death in 1924, Vladimir Lenin's embalmed body was placed on permanent display in Moscow. Moscow's Red Square. To keep his appearance intact, a rigorous process of maintenance is regularly performed on Lenin's body. Every 18 months, they remove him from the mausoleum, and a team of specialists carefully replace the fluids used for preservation, they touch up any blemishes, making sure he's looking his absolute best for public display. The entire process is conducted with great precision and secrecy. This unique tradition remains one of the most unusual and attention-grabbing aspects of the mausoleum visit. While the preservation efforts are certainly intriguing, they also raise questions about the complexities of historical figures and the methods used to preserve their legacies. Another such example that often captures the public's imagination is that of Walt Disney. It has long been rumored that the animation industry pioneer gave orders to have his body cryogenically frozen in order to be brought back to life at a later date when technology was advanced enough to do so. Disney himself was a huge science fiction fan and looked forward to future medical and technological advances. But could there be any truth behind this urban legend? As appealing as it is to dream of a day when Big Daddy D comes out of the freezer and gets right back into producing some amazing new hand-drawn animation like the classics that we all know and love, the rumor has been repeatedly debunked by those who knew him closely. His daughter gave a statement in 1972 saying that, and I quote, there is absolutely no truth that my father Walt Disney wished to be frozen. I doubt that my father had ever even heard of cryonics. Which is exactly what Walt Disney would have told her to say. So okay, one guy sleeps in a mausoleum, another guy sleeps in a freezer, but the rest of us sleeping in our bed and waking up to an alarm every day, we don't have the privilege of deep sleep like these guys. Which makes me wonder, how did people wake up before they had alarms on their phones? Well, for thousands of years they would wake up at the sound of the animals on their land. Or by church bells. But in the 1800s, when people started working in factories, they needed a new way to mobilize the workers. So they had a person walk up to each window and knock on it with this long stick, usually made of bamboo, to wake up the people that had to go to work. They were called knocker-ups, and they did this in some places all the way up to the 1940s, when their profession became obsolete. Except perhaps for that one last knocker who's patiently waiting to wake old Walt from his slumber. You know what sounds like a nightmare though? What if you do get frozen and tell a buddy of yours to, you know, check in on you every once in a while? Buddy runs out of cat juice and eventually bites the dust himself. So now you're in some basement somewhere, hundreds of years past, technology has progressed so much that they freeze and unfreeze people like it's nobody's business. But because nobody knows about you anymore, you're just hanging in there forever trapped in a block of ice. So for that reason alone, I'm gonna be chilling out here, no pun intended, minding my own business, living life as it was originally meant to be lived. 
What about you? Would you want to get frozen in hopes of being brought back someday and living forever? And how old is your cat? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you again very soon.